Oi, what's happening? I'm Eddie, the Skinhead Gourmet. Today we're making braised short rib agnelotes. So today we're going to be making a little braised short rib agnolotes and you're going to have to have seen two of our earlier episodes to basically pull this one off. If you saw how we're making pasta dough and you saw our bouffe bourguignon, basically we're going to be taking some leftovers from the beef bourguignon and we're going to be making little raviolis with them. Agnolote is usually a term for like a beefy or like a nice hearty like savory ravioli. And we're basically going to be taking our leftovers, we're going to strain that, we got our filling and our sauce. And if you've got a nice sheet of pasta you can work with, we got our pasta dough ready too. So I'm going to be using this food ring, or you can also use a cookie cutter. First thing we're going to want to do is get our pasta ready to be stuffed. So we're going to cut out little rings from a sheet of fresh pasta dough. We're going to put these aside as we cut them out. We're going to have these ready while we have our beef bourguignon is on the stove right now heating up because what we're going to want to do is separate everything solid from the liquids and the juice. They're going to have two different applications throughout the process. pasta ready to go and I've got my leftover beef bourguignon up at a nice boil on the stove. Now if you have a chinois, a china cap, or a nice thin meshed colander, this is this would be a great time to pull it out. We're going to want to strain this. We're going to want the liquid in one pot and everything solid in another. If you don't happen to have any kind of metal strainer, a piece of cheesecloth and a little rubber band can always work in a pinch. We can take this and we're just going to let everything come through and you can use a spoon to kind of help things along and you see all this nice rich brown stuff is going to make this for the sauce that we're going to use to top our little raviolis with. We've separated the solids from the liquid from our beef bourguignon. I've got my liquid sitting here in a saucepan at a medium high heat. And I'm going to take this other one, still has the meat and the veg left from the original beef bourguignon. We're going to add a little bit of ricotta cheese and some Parmesan cheese. Just enough to kind of bind this all up, kind of mellow out the flavor a little bit. It's going to give it like a smooth kind of creamy consistency. You can see even with the heat turned off, it all just incorporates so quickly and nicely. And this is going to be the stuffing for our little ravioli or agnolotes as some people call them. We've got our little pasta discs out, we've got our filling mixed. We're going to take a spoon, we're going to start laying just... You really don't want to put too much in these because you have to remember we're going to be folding these over. We don't want them to burst and run while we're cooking them. So we're going to get just a little bit of filling into each one of these guys. 
We're also going to want to make sure that we have enough filling to go through the amount of pasta we made. can always go back and see if we can sneak a little more into one here and there, if they've got the room. One of the reasons that beef bourguignon is so nice is because when you let it cook for a long time, it shreds. So the meat gets nicely dispersed all throughout, which for our purposes is going to be great because we're going to have a ton left to make these delicious little agnolotes. The stuffing is in place in the pasta. Now for the final step of creating these. You're going to want to fold them over, you're going to want to push down the edges and you can take a fork and you're going to want to kind of seal it up. Not only are we going to help keep these closed and keep all the delicious filling inside, but you're also going to give a nice little decorative edge. And there's your little Agnolotic. Every day I wake up with a bang trace of Agnolotes made up. We've got them on a baking sheet. We're going to pop these in the freezer for about 30 minutes. Afterwards, you can either throw them into bags to cook later, and they hold up nicely in the fridge, or freezer rather, or after 30 minutes, we can dump them right into a pot of salted boiling water. Now that we've got the pasta portion of it done, you've got your sauce that we had going on the stove. You can tell once it's about ready because it should be nicely reduced. You don't want to burn it, you don't want to scorch it, and if it starts to develop a skin, you're going to want to get that stirred back in and nice and rehydrated. We're going to want this sauce a little on the thick side. That's really going to be how it's going to work the best on these agnolotes. We don't want them to be swimming in it, but we are going to want to coat them a little bit. But while we're doing that, we're going to take ourselves a tomato. And if you remember how to do a tomato concasse, or if you remembered how we were de-seeding tomatoes, we can leave the skin on for this one. But we're going to want to get a nice small dice on these, because we're going to be finishing the plate with them. It's going to bring a nice, wonderful flavor to the dish. It's going to put a little color on the plate, and I think it's going to just make a nice addition all around. And we're going to get ourselves a quarter of a lemon. Now, if you have a microplane or a zester, you can actually just pull that out discard a good amount of what we're about to do. I'm going to go through how to get a little nice little lemon zest for your garnish and to add flavor if you don't have a tool specifically to take care of that for you. What we're going to want to do is go around. We're going to just remove the skin from the lemon just like we do with a tomato. I'm going to cut the top off, cut the bottom off, give it a nice little julienne. We're going to want to try to slice these guys as thin as you can comfortably. If it has a little meat to it, it's not going to be the end of the world, or if there's a little pulp on it. But these are going to add a nice flavor and add a little bit of brightness to the dish. So we've got our sauce nicely reduced. We've got a little bit of lemon in there to add some extra flavor. Mm, there's a beautiful flavor happening in here as is. You can see our water is boiling, and our pasta's been in long enough that we can get these guys going. And this is going to be just like cooking regular pasta. You'll want to make sure there's enough water in the room so everything can move around. You're going to want it at a nice boil, and you'll know when they're done is they'll start to float just a little bit. Three minutes, our pasta's been down on the water. You can tell the dough's got a nice consistency to it. And fresh pasta tends to cook a lot faster than dried pasta. So don't go by guidelines that you're used to with the store bought, you know, crumbly stuff. This is all completely different animal. But once we have this done, we're gonna want to either you can spoon them out directly into the sauce, or if you don't feel like having to fish around, you can't always throw these through a strainer. Get the water out and you're going to want to get these into your saucepan with your reserved sauce. And this is where we're going to finish the plate. We've got our pasta in the sauce. We've got a little bit of heat on it. We're going to take a little bit of butter. We're going to do what's called mounting the sauce to the 
pasta, we're also going to take about about half of our tomato. We're going to want to get these guys in. We can turn the heat up a little bit higher. And you're going to want to start moving this all around. You can use a larger pan if you prefer, just so you have more room. You also don't have to hand flip it. You can use a spoon. You just want to make sure that one, your little egg nolotes get nicely covered. The butter gets to incorporate into the sauce. You also want to get those tomatoes around, that lemon that you put in there. You want to get everything to kind of meld together nicely. stuff in a pan for a minute. You can see the sauce is getting a little bit of a boil. It's also reduced. Now you're just going to want to take your little egg nolotes, put them onto a plate, and we're getting ready for the best part of this recipe, which is going to be eaten. You've got your little egg nolotes on the plate. You're going to take some of your reduced sauce, run just a little bit over the top, we don't need a whole lot of sauce on these because they were cooked and tossed in it. A lot of that flavor is going to be picked up. And we don't want to drown the little guys. You want enough so that it looks nice and it adds that little bit of kick of flavor. You can get some of your diced tomato. Run those over. Some of your nice little bits of lemon. And voila! Some wonderful short rib egg nolotes that you can make at home out of some leftovers and a little bit of pasta dough. It makes for an excellent little snack, a meal. It's a wonderful appetizer. If, you, if you're entertaining, you can make a bunch, put them out with tiny little picks on them. It's just got many applications, all delicious. Thanks for watching. I'm Eddie, the Skinhead Gourmet. Boy, enjoy.